Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and today I have a really special video. Now, at the start of the year, I was really lucky to cross something off my bucket list and that was going to the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London. Or should I say Watford? Would you like to follow me around the corner? Welcome to Hogwarts. Oh my god. It was honestly the best day ever and I really recommend it to anyone who's going to London. I'll be uploading my vlog of that day soon-ish. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. So at the tour there are three gift shops and there is the studio shop at the very end which is huge, the Forbidden Forest shop which is themed after the magical creatures, and also the Platform 9 and 3 quarter shop which is obviously based on Platform 9 and 3 quarters. I actually don't think I bought anything at all from the Forbidden Forest Shop and the Platform 9 and 3 quarter shop, so this is exclusively a studio shop haul. Just a quick disclaimer though, I have been saving for the past year for this trip and yeah, I decided to treat myself really hard. Anyway, let's start with our first item. So the first item is technically a freebie and it is the wizarding passport that you can get at the start of the tour and inside there's just um, little activities and stamping sections for you to stamp and there's also um, hints about where the golden snitches are that are hidden around the tour and also little quiz questions and little snippets of information. The stamping stations are actually scattered around the tour and you can go look for them in order or whichever order you like. I think it's a fun little freebie that anyone can enjoy. My mom was actually collecting all the stamps for me because she, I don't know, enjoyed it. Just make sure you put one page through this, the stamper at one time, otherwise it'll end up going through the pages and not look very nice. So after going through security, you'll see the uh, cloakroom on the right and I got this on the table of the cloakroom thingo desk whatever you want to call it and it was just in a stack and you can get this and a pencil if you want okay so the second item I actually got as part of my deluxe tour package and it is the souvenir guidebook and it has green guts on the front which is the newest expansion from 2019 I think it has information of nearly everything in the tour including the props sets and costumes and if you miss anything during the tour it will probably be talked about in here I believe you can get this for $9.95 at the studio shop at the very end of the tour in my opinion, every Harry Potter fan has to try butterbeer at least once in their lifetime. So these are the souvenir cups that you can get your butterbeer in at the studio tour and this is the tankard and this is the stein. So for the butterbeer itself, it kind of tastes like a butterscotch cream soda with buttersot buttersotch? butterscotch cream on top. I know not everyone likes the taste of butterbeer but personally I like it and my cousins and my dad also enjoyed it very much. The one at the studio tour is actually pretty similar to the one in Japan except for the cream on top. I think the one at the studio tour one was a little bit more butterscotchy and the one in Japan was more of just like a froth, a whipped cream froth and I think I preferred the froth at the Japan one. But comparing the butterbeer itself, I feel like the studio tour one was slightly less sweet. I don't know if my taste buds have changed or if the Japan one was really just sugar. I think it was just full of sugar. Another thing is that the souvenir cups at uh, Universal Studios Japan are slightly bigger, so it looks like this. This one is the similar cup from Studio Tours and yeah, it's a lot smaller actually. Anyway, I recommend that you try the butterbeer when you go to the Studio Tour because it is one of the only places in the world where you can get it and what Harry Potter fan doesn't want to try butterbeer? So you can get the Butterbeer, the Souvenir Tankard or Stein for £6 or you can get the drink on its own for £3 I believe. I would recommend just buying one and sharing it with your friends if you're not really a big fan of sweet drinks so that you can all try it and save some money. So for the actual first item that I bought, it was this Gryffindor school cardigan. Can you see it? I don't know. And it was £59.95. I know that's a little bit expensive but I had my eye on this before I even went to the tour. It's one of the Lock Haven products and they're the Scottish mill that produced the sweaters, um, scarves, cardigans for the actual Harry Potter movies. I'm gonna try to do that thing that the YouTubers do. Magic. 
Oh my god, I actually look like one of those posh British private school kids whose dads drive like Mercedes Benz and their mums drive like Alfa Romeos. Anyway, I wore this into the tour and I wore it over a white long sleeve shirt so it wasn't scratchy at all and it was super comfortable. This is in a size M and it fits me really really well. Continuing on with the uniform theme, I actually got my own set of authentic Gryffindor robes. These were $74.95 and I didn't mind paying that much because the quality is really really good. It is the most expensive item in my haul but I've been wanting these official robes for the longest time. I actually wore this into the tour and I got really amazing pictures which you can see here. Somewhere, I don't know. This is 100% polyester and it is made in the USA and just by touching it you can feel the difference from the obviously cheap eBay ones. Mine is a size XS and I am 160 centimeters tall and these are the perfect length and I really appreciate the fact that these have really deep pockets. Speaking of pockets guys, there's actually a slot for your wand in the left side of your robes. I think that's really cool and it just goes to show the attention to detail that have been put into these robes. Another thing is that if you buy your robes at the studio tour or if you have the ones from Florida or any of the other Universal Studios theme parks, you can actually get your name embroidered right under the Hogwarts crest and I think for Gryffindor they embroider it in gold, Hufflepuff has it in gold as well and Ravenclaw and Slytherin have it in silver. But yeah, the embroidering is free if you have the official robes but I chose not to do it because I wanted my robes to be more screen accurate because in the movies you don't really see anyone with their names on onto their robes. I highly recommend that you take this opportunity if you want a little personal touch to your own robes. Now that we're looking like a proper Hogwarts student, we have to go get a wand from Ollivander's. I was actually intending to buy Queenie's wand because it's just really pretty with the shell on the end but I actually ended up picking someone else's one. So I got Professor McGonagall's one because she is my absolute favorite character. I really admire Professor McGonagall because she's always there for her students when they need her and she's just such a strong and dependable character. Anyway, so the wand comes in a box like this and it has a fragile collectible one, not a toy thingo just here. And it has something to keep it from falling out. It's very well protected with the material around the edge of it. It's like the fuzzy plastic thing, I don't know. But yeah, let's take the wand out. So her wand is actually quite elegant and it has like little round carvings on the handle which I think is quite fun. And on the bottom of the wand, there's like a little nub of like yellowish, clearish resin thing -o. I don't know. And I think it looks really cool and it gives the wand a little pop of color. I think Professor McGonagall's wand was supposed to be made of fur and dragon heartstring, but I'm not quite sure how long it is. One of my favorite scenes in all the movies is actually in Deathly Hallows Part 2 in the Battle of Hogwarts when Professor McGonagall goes Pietotum Locomota and like all the statues come down and after that she just goes I've always wanted to use that spell. That scene was very cute. I'm really happy with this wand and I've got to find a way to display it on the shelf. Probably with the Professor McGonagall pop over there. This was 32 pounds. Okay, so this next item I actually saw in Universal Studios Japan in 2016 and in 2019 last year when I went and it is this Gryffindor mug. So this mug is actually really big and it's like the size of my face. Or maybe I just have a really big face. Anyway, I never bought this when I was in USJ because I thought it was a little big and like I didn't want to risk carrying it back to Australia. It has a Gryffindor crest on both sides and it's printed on and also the Gryffindor like Quidditch banner checked design. It also has Gryffindor next to the um, house crests on both sides. It kind of looks like a castle tower and what's really cool about this is it has two Gryffindor lions on the side and also the sword of Godric Gryffindor in the middle. And I also really like this little detail of the lion on the handle. This mug was $15.95 which is quite expensive actually. Okay, let's go from one big mug to the next and this is a Honeydukes mug which is also like the size of the lower half of my face. It's actually like the perfect size. Actually, I think I should call it a bowl with a handle because it is huge. I really like the Honeydukes logo on the front which is slightly raised which gives it a really cool effect. I also really like the color scheme. The green and pink really scream like candy shop to me. I might use this cup for drinks here and there but I think I'm just gonna leave it on my Honeyduke shelf which is in progress. It was 
13 pounds. Okay, I promise this is the last mug. I think by now that you guys know that the theme of these mugs is that they are huge. On this side, the mug just has obviously the Marauder's Map and on the other side, there is the spell, which is I solemnly swear that I am up to no good, which opens the Marauder's Map as you should know. This one is the Marauder's Map mug and it looks really cool. The footprints on this are actually like slightly indented, which I think is really cool. And it kind of reminds me of when Harry was like stepping on the snow in Hogsmeade in number 3. The castle on the Marauder's map is also slightly raised which I think is a nice touch. The inside is just a deep brown and yeah, it is a weighty mug. I was actually gonna go for the color changing mug which is like black and then when you put hot water, the footprints start to appear on the mug. But I think this one has more detail and just looks a lot nicer. This mug was actually in the clearance section and I got it for $9.95. I bought quite a few pins this time. This first pin is actually a Honeydukes Peppermint Toad box and I just think it was really cute. I really love this pin because it has tiny details such as like the dark chocolate mint toad description on the bottom as well as the peppermint toad name in really nice font on the top. And I just love all things Honeyduke so this pin is going to go into my collection. This pin was eight pounds. Okay, so this next item was something that I wasn't intending on getting initially, but then when I saw it, it looked really nice, so I caved and got it. It is the pin with the cat plates that um, Professor Umbridge has on her walls. And now Professor Umbridge is actually a character that we all know and hate, but I actually really love this pin because it is very creative and unique, and I've just never seen anything like this anywhere else. So at the top, there is a little bow in signature umbrage pink and there are three plates hanging down from the bottom of it. I think the cats are actually really cute and the aesthetic is very cute, but what it's associated with, we should all hate. I'm probably just gonna put it on my pin board and look at it a lot. This pin that I'm definitely not gonna wear out is more expensive than the Marauder's Map mug and the Honeydukes mug at uh, $14.95. Why am I like this? Moving on from Umbridge's cat pin, we have this, which is the Yule Ball Admit to Ticket Badge pin thing. I really like this pin because it is the ticket to the Yule Ball, which is one of my favorite like aesthetics in Harry Potter. It's like a little snowflake or like a, what's it called? The Naruto thing, the shuriken if you're brave enough. Like, phew. oh shit. This pin was $6.95. Next, we have this Hollyhead Hoppies pin, or Hollyhead Hoppies, Holly, Holly, I don't know. I actually got this with the Chudley Cannons pin, which is like a big orange one. I can't find it. I must have dropped it when I was coming out of the van when we were in Watford. I'm sorry, Ron. Anyway, this pin looks very nice, and it is like the logo of the Hollyhead Hoppies, which is the team that Ginny went on to play in after Hogwarts, I think. I'm pretty sure. Another fun fact about the Holyhead Hoppies is that all the team members are female and they all have a G in the name. This pin was the same price as the Chudley Cannons one and it is $7.95. So this next item could also be a costume item I guess and it is the Gryffindor Head Girl pin. I actually wanted to buy this when I was in USJ but they didn't have Gryffindor Head Girl. They only had Head Boy I think. But yeah, now I found it in the studio tour and I bought it. This pin is really cool because it looks like something a head girl or head boy at a real school would actually wear. The red part of the pin is actually slightly see-through and kind of glittery and the outside is Gryffindor gold. Sticking in the same vein of head girl and head boy pins, I actually got the Hufflepuff head boy pin. You may be wondering why I got the Hufflepuff head boy pin, but I don't know, I really like Hufflepuff. They're like my favorite house actually. I think I like them more than Gryffindor, which is sacrilegious. But I got head boy instead of head girl because, I don't know, my dad is in Hufflepuff and maybe he could wear this sometime? I don't know. And if you thought that two head student pins weren't enough, I also got the Slytherin and Ravenclaw head girl pins. I got these two pins because I was in like Harry Potter sensory overload and I thought they would look nice with the Hufflepuff and Gryffindor ones in my pin collection, so yeah. I actually was supposed to get the Ravenclaw head boy to like have an even number of head boys and head girls, but I picked up head girl for some reason and yeah, it's okay. 
the outside part of these two pins are actually in silver which I think looks really nice and gives a bit of variety to the pins. The head boy and head girl pins were actually $6.95 but I don't know why they've written like £7 on the back of all the female ones and $6.95 on the head boy one. They charged me $6.95 on the receipts so I'll go with that. Okay, so the final pin that I bought was the Honeyduke shop sign pin. So this pin makes me really happy because one, it is Honeydukes and two, it is like a shop sign and it dangles and it's so cute. I love it. I saw this in other people's studio tour vlogs and I was just hoping that they wouldn't be out of stock of this because this was literally the pin I wanted the most and I'm very glad that I got it. This pin was $7.95. So I actually don't have these next two items with me because I've given them away already and they are the Gryffindor mascot spinner charm and the Ravenclaw version of the same thing. So the cousins who went with me to the studio tour were actually a Gryffindor and a Ravenclaw and my mom and I decided to get them each a house related item. So I actually saw these online and I thought they were going to be quite small but they actually ended up being quite a decent size. They were each $7.95. So this next item I saw in Cherry Wallace's haul video and I just had to get it myself when I saw it because it just looks amazing and it is this uh, Good vs Evil shirt I believe they call it and I got mine in a size adult S. So like Cherry said it has like a very vintagey movie poster look to it and I really like it. It says Warner Brothers Studio Tour London the making of Harry Potter right in the middle which is really nice. I never really buy shirts from theme parks and attractions because I'll just never wear them again but this one is really nice and I think I'll actually wear this a lot. I think it'll look really nice with like a long sleeve turtleneck on the inside maybe like a grey and like some jeans? I don't know, but I'll definitely be wearing this out and showing my Harry Potter pride. Another thing that I really like about this shirt, and I don't know if they did on purpose or by coincidence, but they put Professor Snape right in the middle of the design. So like all the dark arts people are kind of on this side and all the good people are on this side. And I like how they put Snape in the middle because it kind of represents his life as like a double agent for Dumbledore and Voldemort. And I know that Trelawney's in the middle and Harry's in the middle too, but it looked kind of weird if, you know, there was just a giant empty blue space. It's a very nice shirt, and if they did it on purpose with the Snape thing, then very good, very smart. I like the detail. I forgot to say that the Good vs Evil shirt was actually £15, which is not too bad. So the next item is also a gift for one of my friends, and it is the Slytherin Metal Bookmark. It is quite small actually, but it also has a nice amount of detail for something so small. And the snake on the top actually has like little scales like etched into it, like I don't know, pressed into it. I don't know how they style metal, but anyway, there's also like tiny, tiny, tiny little snakes here. And then a streak of green, and then the Slytherin crest here, and it just says Slytherin down here, and I think that's the Hogwarts logo. You can save your pages with this. No more dog ears. I really hate when people fold the side of their books in. It's just... <clears throat> so funny story, I actually lent a couple of my Harry Potter books to one of my mom's friend's children. He was reading them and whenever he stopped at a page, he didn't have a bookmark. He'd fold the pages in and when I got the books back, I was like... Yeah, lesson learned, I'll never lend my Harry Potter books to anyone again, like I want to spread the news of Harry Potter everywhere, but go to the library. They all have multiple copies of the books, which you can fold, but just don't fold my books! <sighs> anyway, for this bookmark, I'm not gonna tell you the price because it's a gift for a friend and you can probably find the price online anyway if you tried hard enough, so... Yeah, so I don't have the next item because it was actually a gift and I already gave it to my friend. Hello! This is uh, for already. you! Thank you. Ah, it's so only very cute. small, but it's your house. But they were Hufflepuff earrings because she's in Hufflepuff and she likes earrings, and so do I. They were pretty small and simple, but they show your house pride, so yeah. So the next item is a pair of earrings that I bought for myself, and they are the chocolate frog earrings. Now, if you know me really well, you'll know that I really love chocolate frogs and these were so cute that I couldn't pass them up. They're little dangling chocolate frogs with like the box of the chocolate frog on the back and they're actually a studio tour exclusive so you can't get them anywhere else in the world. These were £11. Now, you can't go to a Harry Potter attraction without getting a chocolate frog. 
As I said before, I'm a huge fan of Wizarding Sweets and Chocolate Frogs in particular because they remind me of when Harry and Ron first met in the Hogwarts Express on the way to Hogwarts. It just makes me feel so nostalgic because that's the first movie, that's where the journey began, that's where the friendship began, and oof, only good feelings. So the chocolate frogs come in movie accurate packaging designed by the design duo Mina Lima and this particular one is slightly damaged but I'll tell you why later. Inside you actually get a solid bar of chocolate which is shaped like a frog and this thing is massive. It's about the size of my palm and believe me when I say you can probably knock someone out with this. Who needs stupefy when you can just chuck one of these and knock someone out? <laughs> anyway, you guys who like Harry Potter will already know that Besides, it's the card you want. Each pack's got a famous witch or wizard. Currently at the studio tour, you can randomly get one of the following, which are the founders of Hogwarts, Albus Dumbledore, Gilderoy Lockhart, Hengist of Woodcroft, Bertie Bott, Jacunda Sykes, Devlin Whitehorn, Garrick Ollivander, Artemisia Luftkin, and the newest one is Merlin. So Merlin is the newest card, which was released last year, and you can actually get the new cards in boxes that are specially marked with a gold sticker like this one. Every box with this sticker will always have the card that is being promoted inside of it. So if you want to collect the new cards and know for sure which one you want, then pick up one of the specially marked boxes. That's why I got this box which is really damaged because it was the last Merlin. I asked the staff and this was the last box they could find that was specially marked so it's okay. I already have two on the shelf over there from Universal Studios Japan. Speaking of Japan, the boxes are actually slightly different. So this one is the Studio Tour one and this one is the Universal Studios Japan one. And obviously as you can see, the Studio Tour one is slightly more purple and orange and this one's more blue and yellow. I'm not sure why it's different but otherwise they're exactly the same. They have the same chocolate frog and the cards are also pretty similar but I think the coloring is slightly different. So they tried to be true to the movie with the cards and the wizard on the front actually kind of moves when you like move the card with it and on the back there's just some information about the witch or wizard which I think is very cool. The card itself is made of very good quality like plastic cardboard, I don't know what it is but yeah, I will find somewhere to display this. The chocolate frog was $8.95. In keeping with the chocolate frog theme, I have the chocolate frog collector's tin. It's pretty much the same design as the paper one, but it's made of tin, so you can keep stuff in it after you're done with it. So on the inside, there's actually also a chocolate frog, which is exactly the same as the one in the paper version. Let's get it out. It's stuck! Got it. Another really cool thing about the chocolate frog tin is that you get all four Hogwarts House Founders and Professor Dumbledore's um, Chocolate Frog cards. So when I went to Japan, I got two Chocolate Frogs and I actually got Helga Hufflepuff and Professor Dumbledore. And I was kind of bummed out because I really wanted Godric Gryffindor because I'm in Gryffindor. But yeah, it's really cool because now I have a full set of the House Founders because of the tin. So I noticed that the one from Universal Studios is slightly more blue than the one from Studios. And the one from Studios is also a little bit darker in the portrait. Like, the saturation is a lot deeper, I guess. And again on the back, the Studio Tour one is slightly more higher in saturation, I guess. And the Japanese one is more muted in color. Otherwise, they're exactly the same size-wise, I think. Yeah, they're exactly the same and the pictures both move and yeah. It does smell really good though. I'm really tempted to eat it, but I want to take some pictures before I do. So being a fan of the Wizarding World Sweets packaging, I also got the Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Bean um, Souvenir Tin, Collector's Tin, I don't know what it's called, I forgot. It has a really cute little tassel on the top, and it also actually has a set of the beans on the inside, which I will probably not be eating unless it's for a challenge, because they are gross. I got brought an egg and it was horrible. So you take the top off with the tassel and then you can take out the bag of beans which is actually quite big. If you like jelly beans, maybe this is worth the risk but I'm not really a huge fan of jelly beans so it is definitely not worth the risk. But what's really nice of them is that they give you a key or a legend or whatever you want to call it of the jelly bean and their flavours so you can avoid the gross ones and give them to your friends. Another really cool feature of this is that the front actually has like a window so you can see what's inside and in my case they'll be the beans because I don't think I'll ever finish them even if I do a challenge because they're just disgusting. I still have the ones from Japan like here and they are pretty gross. 
they've been in there for I think three years no four years yeah it's been four years they're probably pretty nasty I'm not gonna open it I just kept them in there to make it look like the box had candy in it this tin of danger was $15.95 and I forgot to mention but the chocolate frog tin was also $15.95 wow I think I'm gonna be a crazy tin lady because this next item is also a tin from Honey Dukes and it is the sherbet lemon so there's actually quite a few different types of candy you can get in these tins there's like fudge salted caramel whatever and I got this one because it's a tin and it's more durable than a like paper thingo. I got sherbet lemons because they are Professor Dumbledore's favorite candy. They're actually just your average lemon hard candy and they are actually quite tasty so I'll probably finish these and then fill them up with some candies that look exactly the same but with like sherbet in the middle. So yeah, they're actual sherbet lemons. They're more sherbet than these ones which don't actually have sherbet in the middle I think. Oh, I just can't taste it. This tin of sherbet lemons was £10. So the box for this next one is actually empty and they are the fudge flies. Okay, so I took the chocolate out because I didn't want to put the box in the fridge and damage it. So I just took the chocolate out and put it in itself. But yeah, they are milk chocolate flies with fudge flavoring and there is 113 grams of this. The only fudge I've ever had is like the fudge from the McDonald's Sundays but I don't know if it's the same, we'll see. It looks like a little fly, which is kind of gross because it looks like a fly full of chocolate and then you're eating it, but let's not talk about that. It's very, very chocolatey and the fudge flavor is like kind of strange. It kind of tastes a bit alcoholic. I know it's not because kids eat this, but I don't know, I can't put my finger on it. A pack of fudge flies was five pounds. The next item is the peppermint toads, which are also very empty. These peppermint toads I actually started eating in Malaysia when I had like a little stopover. Here's what's left. There are two because I've been snacking on them. They're shaped like little toads and they are dark chocolate with mint. And yeah, they're quite delicious. Mmm, that's good. The peppermint toads were also five pounds. This is just turning into a candy eating video because the next item are exploding bonbons. I actually regret not getting them in Japan when I went last year because I found out that there were white chocolate with um, orange and pineapple popping candy in the middle, which sounds pretty damn delicious. Again, the packaging is really, really cute and it's gonna live on my honeyduke shelf when I'm done with it. Carefully open it. I'm like opening a very nice present. This is so cool. They are like little eggs. It's so cute. And anyway, this is what it looks like. It's just a little bonbon and yeah. I've been very excited to eat this because of the popping candy, so I hope it doesn't disappoint me. Okay, so that was a journey, but the chocolate itself was really, really good. I could really taste the orange, but the pineapple was a little bit weaker, but it was still there. I was expecting it to like start fizzing straight away because it's called an exploding bonbon, but it just kind of, I don't know, fizzed weakly at the end. I'll probably like fold these back into like the right shape and put them back in because I want to keep it as a display on my honeydew shelf. The exploding bonbons were eight pounds. So we've reached the final edible item and it is the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes You Know Poos. As you can see, I have made my way through more than half of it. They're actually just like green M&Ms, but in the movie they're supposed to make you have constipation as the name suggests. The constipation sensation that's gripping the nation. But luckily, these haven't given me constipation yet. Look at these ones, they're like conjoined twins. This particular jar was actually the last one of the Unopoos on the shelf and I couldn't see any more so I grabbed it and yeah, it's mine now. I'm probably just gonna finish this off slowly and then fill it back up with green M&Ms and then put them up on the Weasley shelf which I have planned but have not started. Anyway, these were seven pounds. So the final Honeydukes themed item is actually this ceramic chocolate frog box. I actually saw this online at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour shop and immediately knew that I had to get it because it is just so beautiful. Just look at it. 
The whole thing is actually made of ceramic and you can just take the lid off and put little trinkets in there and then close it and keep them organized on your desk. And the details on this thing are just amazing. It's also a little on the pricey side of 20 pounds but for the quality I think it's quite worth it. Or maybe I'm just crazy, I don't know. To better show off my house pride, the next item I got was this Gryffindor pennant. Anyway, I know you can get these on a few places online, but I decided to get mine in person at the Studio Tour. It is made of very stiff felt so it can stay on its own and the logo is actually embroidered on a patch and then sewn onto the um, pennant. The logo on the front is embroidered. It's very nice embroidery and I think it's very good quality and for $9.95 it's a little bit expensive as well, but you know, Harry Potter fans will spend money on Harry Potter things. So the next thing I got were these two Gryffindor and Hufflepuff pencils which were one pound each. They're just like normal pencils. They have like the Quidditch design on them which I thought was pretty cute. I saw them at the checkout and yeah I know it's a trick to get you to spend more when they put items like this at the checkout but I was happy. I was at the studio tour. My two favorite houses, I, I got them. I'm probably not going to use them to write with because I don't want to sharpen away the really nice designs so they will be display. So this next item is something I really really like the look of and it is the Dumbledore Daft or Dangerous Daily Profit article as a note card and I just think it's really really cool because there's a little bit of gold falling at the top for the Daily Profit's P and then the picture of Dumbledore actually slightly moves. It's like the chocolate frog card actually. I'm not going to be sending this to anyone, I'm not going to write in it, but I'm probably going to put it on the Hogwarts shelf that I'm going to have. This was four pounds. So the next item is a very simple postcard. It is of the um, first year students going to Hogwarts across the Black Lake in the little boats. And yeah, this picture just really makes me feel happy because it's like I'm going on my own journey to Hogwarts. And yeah, this picture is just iconic. I actually have a giant puzzle of it. 1,500 pieces, I think, which is on the floor right next to me, which I haven't finished. It's nearly done, but I just haven't had the motivation to finish it because it's just all the black pieces of like here left and they all look the same, so... I don't know what the heck I'm doing. On the back, it just says Warner Brothers Studio Tour London and the making of Harry Potter. And yeah, the front is quite glossy, which I really like. And yeah, I'll be displaying this on the Hogwarts shelf as well. We have made it to the final item on the list, and that is the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone 20 Years of Magic House Edition Gryffindor book. That was a mouthful to say, and I hope I don't have to say that again. I've been wanting this for a while, and even though I've seen it in like Target and Kmart here in Australia, it's just not the same as getting a book from the studio tour itself. It may sound really stupid to you, but it's because Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is where the journey began for the trio and it laid the foundation for the rest of the books in the series and the studio tour is where all the movies had their start. Obviously because it's where the movies were filmed. So yeah, I wanted to get the start of the books at the place where the movies started. That's the reason and it sounds really dumb, but yeah, I'm gonna be cherishing this book forever. I haven't read it yet because uh, I've been busy at work, but it's beautiful and it has, uh, I think that's nearly headless sneak at the back. Ooh, I nearly forgot, but the book itself was $7.99. So as part of the deluxe tour package, you actually get a lanyard which shows that you are a deluxe ticket holder. It is very large, which might be annoying if you want to take a lot of pictures because you have to like put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. So at the start, there would actually be tickets in here for your hot meal and drink, your butterbeer coupon, your photo package, and there was something else, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, your souvenir guidebook, yeah. I actually want to give Freddy, who was my tour guide, a shout out because he was really awesome and he really told us a lot of stuff that we wouldn't have known otherwise. And also to Gemma, who was in that area with all the Mandrake stuff and like the puppets and all that. Um, I stopped and had a chat with her, she was really nice and yeah, uh, I met Gemma and she is great, so if you go to No, you're too you not. Know, she's great. She knows a lot of things about Harry Potter. So if you come to the tour, no, 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 no. 
Sarah, I'll tell you. Anyway, another thing that you can actually do at the studio tour that's really fun is to take pictures in front of a green screen that makes it look like you're flying on a broomstick or on the Hogwarts Express. Now with the two deluxe tour tickets, we actually have a combined total of eight pictures and two videos, but a really nice member of staff, I won't say their name and I won't like, you know, hint at who it is because I don't want them to get in trouble, but they were really nice and they gave me 16 pictures and four videos, which is double of what we're supposed to get. It really made my day and my cousins as well because we only had two deluxe tickets but three of us so yeah we got some very nice keepsakes. They come in these really nice like books with like some information about how they did the green screen stuff and this is the picture that I got with my cousins. It's a have you seen these wizards wanted poster and they told us to do a scary face so naturally I did my ugliest face. Yeah, this one looks really stupid and it felt very stupid to do, but the lady was very nice. She was a Ravenclaw and she was the one telling us like what actions to do. This is actually my uh, Quidditch picture and I'm trying to catch the golden snitch and it looks really stupid. It felt even more stupid, but yeah. Since the nice staff member was going to give us extra pictures, I decided to get this one, which is the Hogwarts in the Snow with me on the broomstick and for once, I actually don't look like freaking ugly, so yeah, that's good. I also got two videos, which was the one on the broomstick and the one that we had in the Hogwarts Express. They're both pretty stupid, I'm not gonna lie. If you want to see them, they'll probably be in the vlog because I couldn't video the green screen area. And at last, we've reached the end of my Warner Brothers Studio Tour haul and I hope you enjoyed watching it. I think my favourite item definitely has to be the Gryffindor robes because it makes me feel very magical and it makes me feel like a Hogwarts student and I don't know what I'm doing with my arms. Just want to show you the crest. Anyway, let me know down below what your favourite item from this video was and I'll reply to every single one of you because I never get that many comments, so... It's an easy job. You can also ask me questions about the studio tour and I'll try my best to answer even though I've only been once. I'll try to give some good advice. And yeah, I think this video is long enough so I should just go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!